Just replace the transistors in this IF module as this R707 uh, and capacitors inside as well. I just want to ascertain that the alignment's correct. So it's a good idea to do a sweep um, alignment on this radio, which is what I'm planning on doing this evening. Now, what I'm doing is I'm using the uh, 675A sweep generator, uh, which is basically designed for uh, this purpose alone. It's not just a sweep uh, generator, it's also uh, good for sort of like pass, band pass filters and things. It's got lots of additional inputs and things for doing this sort of thing. Um, so what we're doing at the moment is we've, uh, we're feeding in our swept frequency into the first IF, or the, the first part of the IF module. There's another IF amplifier in this module as well, but I'm actually bypassing that. So I'm feeding my signal into here and taking the signal out of the IF amplifier on that resistor, which seems to be the best place to do it. Um, so I'm sweeping at a 1 MHz bandwidth. This is our bandwidth selection switch here. This is our sweep width, 1 MHz. Um, our centre frequency of 10.7. You see it's not quite on 10.7, but that's because these dials aren't particularly accurate. Uh, I'll explain that in a minute and show you how you set the centre frequency. Um, because this is designed to do bandpass filters and things like that, you don't need XY mode on the scope. It, you can do it with XY mode uh, with a traditional sweep generator, but, but in this with this spec, this sweep generator, it's not necessary. So we've got our sweep running, and we've got our vertical output of our scope going to channel one, and that's giving us our uh, S curve on the on the waveform here. And our horizontal output, all we're using the horizontal output for is for the external trigger to keep the display nice and stable. You can trigger off the uh, channel one, but it's uh, certainly much more stable if you do it from an external trigger source. Now, I know one of my uh, followers thinks that because you can hear the buzz in the speaker when it's sweeping, that you're modulating the signal. There is no modulation. The modulation is turned off. What you're hearing is the sweeping frequency of the, of the, of the uh, IF strip as the signal passes to the bandpass filter. If we slow our sweep speed down, we'll hear the frequency drops off. But we need the higher frequency to... Uh, Around 50 hertz is usually good to get the, the S curve and the waveform. So, first of all, I'm going to uh, check the alignment of the IF amplifier. So, I'm going to go for the maximum amount of deflection, and also we might need to make sure we've got a good band pass. Uh, I think sort of about 800 kilohertz, that's 100 megahertz, uh, 1 megahertz is from this point to put this point here, and we're sweeping through that frequency there. So we need to keep that wide. We can get more amplitude on the waveform, but we'd have to close the waveform up and then you get a narrower sort of pinch sound. So we need to, there's no specifications by the way for these modules. They don't pass you any information on what, how to do this. They say that you should replace the module or send it back to them to have it aligned. See, that's not possible because miles have gone years ago. So see our sweep frequency here this is the, st the start frequency that's the stop frequency so somewhere in the middle we want our 10.7 reference now there's a number of ways of doing that um, one way is to have a 10.7 megahertz oscillator nearby and use that as a heterodyne uh, but what I'm going to do is because this has got markers and basically what the marker generator does is it generates a, a frequency at that particular uh, that, at that known frequency now there's two ways I can also do this is put an external marker in from my uh, little old British marker generator here which is basically a quartz crystal and a, a, a 10.7 megahertz oscillator and we can feed that into the external marker position here and that will give us our, our marker signals at 10.7 I'll just show you that quickly now the only problem with this this oscillator is it's quite got quite a strong output um, so when you put it on it tends to swamp everything a little bit as you can hear once it comes back okay it's, the trouble is the signal is so strong it can actually interfere and I need to put some attenuation on that so we've got our S curve back but it has stunted it but if I turn this marker amplitude up there's our marker okay and well, that marker is 10.7 megahertz so we know our reference point so we need to get that S curve in the centre of that that marker. The marker is always going to be at the centre point and preferably at zero volts. But 
as I say, this is a bit too strong for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the internal marker generator that's on this um, on this radio. We've got our sweep back again now. Let's turn the volume down. We don't need the volume because we're coming out of the directly out of the amplifier. So I'm going to use my 100 kilohertz comb generator. What a comb generator is is basically at every 100 kilohertz there'll be a um, a signal. Um, it's like a harmonic. Uh, high, it's got a very high third harmonic, so basically all the all the frequencies will show up at 100, meg, uh, 100 kilohertz. And as you see on the scope there, there are our markers. This is our we know that's a 10.7 because that's that's where we just confirmed that with the 10.7 megahertz reference. That's 10.8. That's 10.6. So it gives you a good idea of uh, the sweep width. So what I'm going to do now is all I've got interested in doing is getting this waveform the best S as possible. And you can see that's a pretty good S already, obviously lying on its side. Um, and these, we can alter our marker signals and we can have them quite large, but we want to keep them as small as possible. And you can actually adjust the, amp the marker width with this switch here. But what it tends to do, if you go narrow, it tends to make them just sort of like a bit sort of wobbly and not very clear, as you can see there. Uh, they're probably the, about the best markers you'll get. We don't need the marker generator on all the time. All we need to do is try and get the waveform as uniform as possible. So let's have a let's have a tweak with the uh, IF quickly. Now uh, I've marked also on the on the cans where the position of everything, so we can always revert back to where we were. So I'm going to start with the first IF. This is the first IF transformer, and adjust that and see what we get. And you see it's shifting the waveform and it's squashing it down a bit, so that waveform's amplitude's dropping off to so come back again and it goes the other way so we want a sort of like a uniform the top and the bottom looking very similar and that's probably about the best you'll get what I'll do now is just turn the marker up again just make sure our 10.7 is still in the center which it is okay so let's go to the second the secondary of that transformer and squashing that down okay best we're gonna get there this is the uh, second IF similar sort of thing best sort of symmetry as uh, the secondary of the second IF and it has less and less effect you go along but you see there's a slight slight improvement there maybe Bruce most important thing is we've still got this center frequency and this waveform looks very similar to that so basically if you invert it you shouldn't be able to tell the difference. Well, we come on to our discriminator coil now this is the, the primary of the discriminator and usually this one just makes the amplitude different and let me just show you here okay very similar to the IF effect you can get a nice much much gain as you can basically without bringing this closer together and also keep your signal low as possible to stop the AGC activating. Right, this comes the S-curve, and this is the S-curve, which is the uh, discriminator, and you watch this make a vast difference on what happens. Um, there you go. And you see what that difference is doing? Now you can actually almost invert the S-curve, but so that's this is the main control that we were interested in, to get the nice S curve and basically this is the thing that gives you the best the fidelity of the radio the IF amplifier will give you the sensitivity the S curve the discriminator will give you the, the sound fidelity so basically what we're doing is we're sweeping either side of the pass band below and above and the diodes are one diode is conducting this way and the other diode is conducting the other way if I adjust that core that only one diode is pulling its weight and then it's just all it, all, it would all go mushy and it sounded very distorted um, so it's important to get that S curve and that see that marker see that markers below the 0 volt line now you can see our 0 volt point is here or this line here you see our marker is below that now if you've got the scope DC coupled it should give you the, a, a pretty accurate representation of where you want it to be and it wants to be about there it's zero volts just probably just bring it down slightly I would say about there pretty pleased with that that's a pretty good sort of waveform 
there you go so that's basically what it involves now the, the, the biggest problem is actually finding the right place to hook these things up there's no as I say there's no documentation and this is only doing the IF in this 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 section here you, um, there are other ways of doing the uh, IF alignment if you haven't got sweep generator uh, and you're not too worried about the fidelity of the audio what you can do is you can just feed in a 10.7 megahertz fixed frequency modulate it with FM and get the maximum amount of amplitude you can out of the, each transformer sometimes there's a problem with that where the sound will sound pinched or the actual amplifier will start to motorboat which is um, uh, sort of like a buzzing sort of drumming sound and uh, nothing to do with women's breasts by the way uh, the other thing uh, when you finish that the alignment the the way you can do the discriminator is to uh, tune into an AM signal uh, and then adjust it for a minimum amount of AM noise so AM hiss but the, the true way to do it is is this uh, this is the most accurate way it will give you the best fidelity so but yeah, that's really just a quick rundown on the uh, alignment of uh, a Roberts radio. Um, every sweep generator is slightly different, but basically all you want to do is you want to be putting a sweep swept signal into here. Normally, I think on another sweep generator, you have a, a vertical that you put into one channel and then your output from your speaker into the other channel, and then you put listener J mode on or XY mode, and you look for this this X this uh, S curve. It takes a bit of sort of messing about and it's probably best to get another old scrap radio just to mess about with but uh, get a decent radio that works well if you see this waveform you know you're monitoring on the right points anyway i hope that was of some use uh, and uh, happy new year to everyone and uh, thanks for watching